special session of the Town of Florence Planning and Zoning Commission is now in session. The time is 6 p.m. I got to get it right. Old Jin. Orgin. Orgin. Miss Orgin, would you take the roll, please? Chairman Pronzo. Present. Vice Chairman Petrick. Commissioner Bell. Present. Commissioner Smith. Present. Commissioner Frost. We have a quorum. Thank you. Would you please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, discussion, approval, disapproval, and minutes of the regular meeting conducted on June 1st, 2017. Do we have any comment? Accept the minutes as read. I, I see your name. <laughs> Smith. <laughs> That's it. I move that we accept the minutes as read. I'll second. have a motion by Commissioner Schmidt, second by, with the button up. Second by I'll second. Bell. All those in favor? Aye. All those against? Aye. Aye. Against it. No. All against. <laughs> oh, I said again. So <laughs> the, <laughs> motion carried. <laughs> We're about as dysfunctional as this town, you know that? All right, new business. Circle K LLC. PZ 1655, this is a presentation for approval or disapproval, a six month extension to an approved design review application for Circle K convenience store. Uh, the proposed site is located at 255 South Main Street. We have a presentation. Yes, we do. I'm Michelle Lorton, planning manager. The applicant is requesting an extension to his design review that was approved on October 20th, 2016. Um, staff is currently working with the applicant for a development agreement. The development agreement will be reviewed and approved through town council. But before a building permit can be issued, we do need to get this additional six months approved. According to the um, design review approval that was done in October of last year. Um, there were some items that had to take place which have been done, which is the town court infill incentive plan that was approved by town council. And also the applicant submitted their agreement for the waiver of claims that was done also. There are a few other items that they will need to meet according to the conditions on the development agreement PZ 16-55, which they will work towards after their approval. The extension is for six months and the new expiration date will be April 20th, 2018. Staff recommends approval because this extension does not compromise the approved DR PZ 16-55 that Planning and Zoning Commission approved. Thank you. I'll open it up to the commissioners. Do we have any questions or comments? There we go. Michelle, will, will we see these plans come through again? Which plans? These uh, are the design review. Construction plans you will not see. Okay, so once we grant this extension, then um, they're, they're good to go. We won't, we won't see another package come through us for this particular project. Correct. Correct. That's it. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? May I have a motion, please? And I don't know his name either. Um, Mr. Chairman, I'll make a motion to allow the six-month extension to be approved. That, Michelle, is that sufficient for a motion? Yes, along with the comments on the back of the staff. I'm sorry, the conditions. 
and including the conditions that were that were included in the packet this evening. Okay, thank you. Do I have a second? I'm, I don't know his name either. Sorry. Your name. Frost. 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 We have a motion by Commissioner Frost, second by Commissioner Schmidt. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? Motion carried. Under new business. Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 24, PZ 1738. This is a presentation for approval, disapproval of a preliminary plat application for Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 24, submitted by Pulte Home Company, LLC. The subject subdivision is located south of Franklin Road and north of Spirit. Do we have a presentation? Michelle Morton, planning manager. Mm -hmm. The first case, all of these cases deal with Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Brush Merrill Ranch preliminary plat. So I'm just going to give you the specifics for each one, and we'll start with this first one, um, Unit 24. This is a PZ zoning. The approved density on this is 3.37. There are 84 lots. The gross acreage is 25.16. Um, the applicant is requesting approval of this preliminary plat. There are a couple of different conditions on this one. Uh, the preliminary plat currently shows lots 30 to 34 to be within the FEMA flood zone AE. The town of Florence and Pulte Home have agreed that the, no vertical construction um, will take place until the approval of the letter of map revision has been established. Um, at the, at the time, the final plats resolution will add this extra precaution to it, and that's when it goes to town council. Staff recommends approval of this preliminary plat. At this time, I'll open it up to the commission. Do we have any questions or comments? Yeah. Mr. Chairman, yes, if I could please. Um, Michelle, uh, two questions. Okay. Um, I noted in the minutes that um, on the last page it says in the future the police department will be part of the review process. Are they now part of the process on all these preliminary plats? Yes. Um, all, all of the departments, uh, the fire, police, uh, public safety, um, the building department, engineering, public works, and development services are all now part of this process. We have a pre-application meeting before each one goes to the next step, which is plan review through staff. Awesome, thank you very much. Second question is um, the, the condition you talked about there on lots 30 through 34, where it says allow no, no vertical construction until approval of the LOMAR. Typically this is gonna be a LOMAR based on fill and uh, you're not going to get out of the flood zone until you have something to certify as a minimum finished floor, but that precludes you, this stipulation precludes any vertical construction happening. Correct. So how, how are you going to pull that off? That is through fill. We, we do have the applicant and the applicant's engineer here as well. Please state your name. Uh, my name is Christopher Salas. I'm the Development Services Director as well as the town engineer. Um, the vertical construction relates to combustibles of the actual structure. The grading of the lots can be done once the, uh, again, there was a clomar done for this entire area, so they're only doing now individual grading or mass grading of each unit. And then at that point, as soon as the grading is done, they're out there actually uh, creating as-builts and then creating the model to submit to the town and FEMA for the LOMAR. At that point, once they've received the LOMAR, then they can go vertical constructions, vertical construction, but the town is now disallowing lots to be built in an active floodplain. Okay, so I guess what you're saying is that FEMA is allowing you to shoot the pad, the finished pad, and submit your um, letter of map revision request versus shooting the minimum finished floor in adjacent grade, which is normally required. No, 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 no. This is, you're, you're correct. This are, they're two different processes. 
we're only looking at doing the finished grade for the purposes of the LOMAR. Once the LOMAR is created, then we're not doing a LOMA, L-O-M-A, for just that pad. It'll be comprehensive, it'll be a LOMAR. A LOMA is a correction, but a LOMAR gets you out. Um, and, and obviously from I'm talking, I've done this before in my life, and, uh, and when we did it previously, you had to have a finished floor that a surveyor could shoot but if your definition of going vertical is the wood and the combustibles and you can pour your concrete pad and, and your foundation and you shoot that, then I'm, I got a thumbs up here. I just wanted to make sure that we're not putting a condition on here that they will never be able to meet. This condition has been worked uh, previously through Unit 38 as well with Pulte and Jared Baxter Engineering. Um, they've been in agreement with the town's uh, direction on this and they have actually had an agreement approved with the town for unit 38 as well. Um, so yes, absolutely, they're, they're part of the solution. Okay, just wanted to make sure we weren't going to be approving something that would be hard to do, so thank you. Any other questions or comments? Everybody's happy? Can I have a motion, please? Don't be bashful, somebody. What are we asking for? A motion for? For Kentham at Merrill Ranch, Unit 24. Unit 24. Motion is moved. Check. Is the acceptance? The, yeah. The Kentham at Merrill Ranch, Unit 24. That's I don't think they got that. I got it. Yeah, it's okay. Sorry. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion by Com Commissioner Schmidt, second by Commissioner Frost. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those against? Motion carried. Under new business, C, Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Unit 32. PZ 1739, this is also a presentation for approval, disapproval, preliminary plat application Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 32, submitted by Pulte Home Company, LLC. The subject subdivision is located southeast of Spirit Loop and north of AMR Unit 36. Michelle Lorton, Planning Manager. Again, Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 32. Um, the items here, the approved density is 3.29. The number of lots is 80. The gross acreage is 24.24. .24. It meets all of the, um, the preliminary plat meets all of the um, Anthem at Merrill Ranch, PUD and town code and staff recommends approval. I'll open it up to the commission. Any questions or comments? Commissioner Frost, please. Uh, Michelle, I, again, this is probably one of my standard comments that they've heard before, but when I look at Tract B on the south end of this development, there are um, visibility problems in my mind for a police officer to see the backsides of 37, 38, 40, and 41 doing routine patrol. So I'm just concerned for safety and nefarious behavior happening in those areas. So. The, the police department did take a look but at They looked this. at it, so yes, I'm... They did. But, okay. Any other questions or comments? May I have a motion, please? I'll Second. make a motion that we approve uh, Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Unit 32, PZ 17-39, with uh, staff's recommendations. May I have a second, please? I'll second. Motion by Commissioner Bell, second by Commissioner Schmidt. All those in favor? Aye. All those again? Motion carried. Okay. Under new business D, Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Unit 34, PZ 1740. Presentation approval, disapproval, preliminary plat application for Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Unit 34. Submitted by Pulte Home Company, LLC. The subject subdivision is located east of Hunt Highway and west of Spirit Loop. 
have a presentation. Hello, <laughs> Michelle Lorton, planning manager. This is for Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Unit 34. The information on this lot, it has an improved density of 3.95. Let me switch that over. There we go. Uh, 87 lots. The gross acreage is 20. Wait a minute, I went too far. <laughs> okay. That was better. All right. Number of lots is 87. And it's 21.98 acres with a 3.95 density. Just to remind you again, the overall density is 3.5. So some will be lower and some will be greater. This one's 3.95. Um, the propo proposed preliminary plat, Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Unit 34, is in conformance with the PUD and town code, meets the density and open space requirements. Staff recommends approval. Open up to the commission. Questions or comments, gentlemen? Mr. Frost. <laughs> it has been reviewed by the police department. <laughs> All right, then I'll ask for a motion. I'll make the motion that we approve the Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 34 PZ 1740. May I have a second? Second that. We have a motion by Commissioner Schmidt, second by Commissioner Frost. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Under new business, E, Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 60, PZ 1743. This is also a presentation for approval or disapproval. A preliminary plat application for Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 60 submitted by Pulte Home Company, LLC. The subject subdivision is located east of the proposed Sun City Boulevard and west of Felix Road. Now let me guess, we have a presentation. Michelle Lorton, planning manager. I just wanted to uh, bring your attention that Sun City Boulevard is proposed. It hasn't been built yet, but it will be. Um, and then information on this one, Anthem at Merrill Ranch, Unit 60 has approved density of 2.90. Again, we're making that up on the 3.5 for the entire Anthem at Merrill Ranch. There are 90 lots, 30.94 acres. The proposed preliminary plat Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 60 is in conformance with the PUD and town code, meets the density and open space requirements, and staff recommends approval. Open up to the commission. Ogden. I have one comment, it's small, and it's really to who is ever pre preparing these maps. I don't really know the Anthem area very well, and I would appreciate it if we could get a north arrow on maps that come forward from now on. Help me figure out which way I'm looking. I will make sure that happens. Thank I you. Cut and pasted this one in there. So oh, you did it. I will, well, I don't do the maps. Our GIS um, coordinator does the maps, and then well, I Well, let him put them. the north arrow on his He little. does, but I shrink them so I can get as much as I can in there. But I will make sure north arrow shows up. Thank you very much. Any other questions or comments? May I have a motion, please? I'll move that we accept the Anthem at Merrill Ranch Unit 60 PZ 1743 as a second, please. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Schmidt, second by Commissioner Bell. All those in favor? Aye. All those against? Motion carried. New business, item F, Merrill Ranch Unit 55, PZ 1745. This is a presentation for approval, disapproval of a preliminary plat application for Merrill Ranch Unit 55, submitted by Pulte Home Company, LLC. The subject subdivision is located in the northeast corner of Constitution Way and National Way. Okay, we have a presentation. Michelle Lorton, planning manager. This one is Merrill Ranch, unit 55. I didn't get that on there. I left the anthem on there. But um, this has a approved density of 3.91. This one's a little different. Instead of the 3.5, it has a maximum density of 4.0. But this one is 
the gross acreage is 54.47, and there are 213 dwelling units on this one. Uh, the proposed preliminary plat, Merrill Ranch, Unit 55, is in conformance with the PUD and town code, and it meets density and open space. Staff recommends approval. I'll open to the commission. Any questions or comments? Commissioner Frost. Chairman, if I could please, um, Michelle, just a couple of questions and um, on this one. I see that this is on the family side of, of the development. Correct. Um, <clears throat> Just a, a curiosity question at this point in time, are there any family type amenities planned for any of the retention basins slash pocket parks here? They are close to the park, so there are no additional ones on this plant. Okay, now this is kind of kitty corner from the park area, right? Okay, and, and then even though police has looked at this one, I, this one has a I wasn't as concerned about the, the other one that we looked at because uh, it's the retirement area and they have the view fences, but boy, this one's got view problems big time in the basin in the kind of in the south eastern quadrant of there behind lots 130, well, basically 127 to 136, 122 to 126 in that area. And uh, knowing that the family side gets the masonry walls or creating a dead zone back in there that isn't, I don't think it's conducive to um, family safety and, and, uh, and children playing and that, that would be a natural magnet for those children to be down in that retention basin, I, I would think. Interesting. Please state your name for the record. Yep, uh, Randy Chrisman, Pulte Homes. Um, because all of our amenities are gonna be in the main park area, uh, I imagine the retention basin areas will probably just be rocks and landscaping, no grass. So similar to the one across the street, Unit 53, and uh, to try to keep people out of those areas as, as best we can. There is a trail system on the north side of this parcel that we'll be putting in, but other than that, just trying to keep people out of those areas if possible. Yeah, I, I, I will admit I am a resident of the area, so and, and, and I watch the kids, and I'm a parent of six children, all grown up now. And uh, my adventuresome boys would find those spots no problem at all, and I, and I watch kids in the neighborhood, and they're finding spots that I know you did not designate as play areas to be in. And so I, the, the kids being in there, is not as big of a necessarily a concern because I think their, their motives are tend to be good, but it's what could happen when older, you know, we, we just see bad things happening and one bad incident could spoil it for the whole community. So I'm, I'm just very concerned about policeability of areas and, and these are very hard to police unless the officer is willing to get out of his car mm -hmm. and there are not too many officers that are gonna do that because of the amount of area they're gonna have to cover. So this always is a huge red flag for me to see areas that are hidden from view. Gotcha. Yep, point taken. Commissioner Frost, you seem to have a lot of knowledge in this area. What could we stipulate that might help this situation? You mentioned rock instead of grass, things of this nature. I, I just think it's a hidden area where um, you know, and this, this might sound judgmental, but maybe adolescent teenagers and whatnot who want to get away with things, mm -hmm. this would be a place where they would go to to be able to do things like that or, or others that, so it's, it's, just a, it's just a big concern and a red flag of mine because of where I've seen this happen elsewhere in a previous life, I guess. I, I guess, Commissioner Frost, Jerry Baxter, Baxter Design Group, uh, engineer for the, for the site here. As I'm looking at the map, uh, the majority of the area that we're talking about is fronted by four cul-de-sacs. Um, plenty of view of any of that open space in the middle and then yep. running to the south. I don't believe that's the area you're talking about, correct? Um, right. Okay, I think the area you're talking about is what, what's considered Tract H, I believe, on the plat itself. Uh, Tract H has a very large, almost a fifth, almost a hundred foot wide opening between lot 126, 127 that can view into that open space cat area. 
Now, while I agree there is corners in that open space area where some nefarious activity could possibly happen, but that area is not continually, continuously closed. Uh, any patrol going along that curve should be able to look in and see the majority of that area in a whole. Uh, we, we purposely left those lots out in that area to allow for that view from the road. We talked to the police department as part of the preliminary plat process and had their input in that. And then we did remove some lots in that area to allow them to do that. Are we going to be able to engineer? Are we going to be able to make every little nip and cranny of this development out here uh, in accessible for nefarious activity? I think that's a little much to ask for anybody. But uh, as you look at that plat, you can see the opening that we actually pulled a lot out and lost a lot in that area to provide that view for the police department out into that majority of that area. So I think it was addressed, it was concern of the police department and we, we did try to address it to the best of our abilities without losing too many lots out in this area itself. Uh, not gonna to absolutely say for sure what Pulte's gonna do in that area, but we, we have traditionally done in that area, if it is landscape, there's usually some parcel view fences that can be placed in that area not that they have to be placed in that area, really the market will determine that uh, as far as whether they want some partial view to an open space out in that area. But uh, I would say for the majority of that area, it is visible for a policeman to be driving down that world to see it. And, and I, I don't argue with you on the majority of it's yeah. visible, but I would say that probably 25, 30% is, they're gonna have a hard time seeing in there of that one area. Particularly if any plant material goes in there and, and, and then that always goes in there because I, I know these guys are good about being natural and native and like that. So. Yeah. And, and again, I, I think we've got to be cognizant that we have made an attempt to address what the police had an issue with as far as view of it. We can't engineer stupidity out of everybody. So if, if stuff's going to happen, stuff's going to happen, whether it's... How's the lighting look in that area? The lighting in that area, you know, it's a, it's a retention basin, so there's no lights, but at the opening itself, we have placed lights at the opening along the roadway. So there is street lights right there that will shine in that area, but we don't designate lights into it. Oh, I understand area. that. Yeah. I guess if, uh, I don't know if this is a stipulation that we're allowed to make, but maybe having the, the view fences in that area, so at least it would be. A I, I don't bit think you can make that, sir, because I don't think it's part of the PD requirement itself. And we have addressed this with the police department and yeah. used our best engineering judgment along with their buy-in for that open new place there. We physically lost two lots in this development to provide that opening. Well, it's, it's, it's better than it could be, but I, it's just not as good as I think it should be. So. Okay. As we're still inside the PUD, they're following the rules of the road that were approved some years ago. And unfortunately, at the time, we didn't have the expertise on board to foresee these sorts of things. So, but I do appreciate the engineering effort. Retention basin, unfortunately, is a requirement. So there's, it's a catch-22, the best you can. I agree with you. I don't like one side, but the other side says you have to have it anyway. And I really don't know what to do with it. I don't have an answer. So do we have any other questions or comments? I guess it's just there's a lot more opportunities out here to do it right, so hopefully in the future we'll keep making an effort to 100% viewability. I'd appreciate that. Thank you. Do we have any other questions or comments? And I'll take a motion, please. I guess since I beat them up, I'll make the motion. Uh, motion to approve Mill Ranch Unit 55 PZ 1745 with staff comments. Second. We have a motion by Commissioner Frost, second by Commissioner Smith. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? Motion carried. Presentation by Development Services. Number one is an update of the Town of Florence Code Enforcement Manual. This should be interesting. 
Again, uh, Chris, Christopher Salas, Development Services Director, uh, Public Works Director, Town Engineer. Um, the town's ordinance as a whole are not changing. That's not what the code enforcement manual is. We're just creating a code enforcement manual, which a lot of other cities have, so that we can have, I guess, if you would, kind of an excuse to have public outreach to hold a few meetings throughout the year to discuss with people, again, how the code enforcement works. This is kind of an opportunity that I think that we've missed in the past to reach out to, again, the residents and explain to them um, code enforcement. And so this kind of is a very brief ev overview, and if you'll think of it, it's more of a layman's way of looking at the ordinance as a whole. But we're not changing the ordinance. We're not making it more restrictive. We're not making it less restrictive. Um, the town believes that over the strategic plan over the last year and a half, 18, 20 months, that the, um, that the council and the residents have spoken about increased uh, code enforcement as a whole. I know I get complaints about you know, people's weeds or um, issues on their, on their structures, uh, to some degree unpermitted work, you name it. Um, just again, sometimes dangerous um, roofs that are starting to, to fall in or fall apart. Um, so as a whole, this is, this is the, all, and we're gonna take this obviously to um, the HDAC, and we're gonna take this to one council meeting for just a work session, which we'd love to have obviously the PNZ join that same um, meeting there and maybe um, ask any questions or any uh, recommendations or any just uh, positive support for the code enforcement manual. Like I said, it's just nothing is changing on our ordinance. There's nothing planned to change. Um, just very simply, a document that we can work with the residents and provide to the residents, and maybe it'd be a little bit easier for them to, to read and understand. It'll be eventually on the website once it's adopted, and we'll have it um, at different buildings for viewing. But it's a very, very short document. It's eight pages. Um, and we definitely can get it to the PNZ members. It's like I said, very layman in nature and just discuss some of the um, opportunities. One of the things that we wanna talk with the town council is how active of an approach do they want to take? Um, right now, um, due to staffing levels, we are a little bit reactive at times. We take people's complaints and then we look at the more serious things from the building safety side as our active code enforcement. Um, there have been several buildings this year that we've been working with the property owners um, to secure, aka board up windows, board up doors, lock door, secure doors um, that have a high fire load internal to the building. And we're concerned with, again, buildings being set on fire due to, again, this nefarious activity that we keep discussing tonight. So we're, we're, we're making sure that we try to work with these property owners on several buildings so far. I think we've already sent out four in, um, since July 1st, since we started the job, we've already sent out four of them. We're working with the fire department on issues like that. Uh, we've taken some, again, some of those complaints have been resident generated in nature at the very beginning, and now we're trying to take them a little bit more active role in those things. Protecting the community, protecting the downtown, uh, Main Street as a whole, but this isn't meant to be in one area. Obviously, the demographic is a little bit different in Anthem than it is in our downtown, uh, but this, this code enforcement manual is um, general in nature. It's not meant to be applied. There is a traffic component as well that we'll be discussing on, again, uh, parking within the right-of-ways. So there will be a, a fire component, a building safety component, what you would consider um, nuisance code enforcement, as well as the, the police department have a role in it. So all, all divisions will be taking an active role in it. Ms. Orkin, does this really fall under the auspice of planning and zoning? Any new amendment that we have does have to go before planning and zoning. This is not a new amendment, but it does deal with our development code. Okay, so the finished product will come before planning and zoning before it goes on to the town council. 
This, this will come just as a review. You will not be voting on it. It's just a courtesy review to the Planning and Zoning Commission. So it's really not under our auspice. We're just being allowed to make a comment. Correct. Yeah, this, this actually, like I said, I didn't even necessarily think of it in that way. Um, this is just out of respect for the committee. I hope that, again, that everyone takes a read, everyone likes what they see, um, as well as, again, HDAC, and obviously the town council adopting it eventually, but this has no teeth. This, this, like I said, is just a revision of the ordinance. This is an opportunity for town staff to, um, again. So what is it? Is it a, a guide for behavior? There, it's partial to that. It's, it's again for the average person to read and understand what some of these the code enforcements are. It talks about how um, the town will operate with the code enforcement. So if you call on um, stagnant water, is that a high level priority, a mid level priority, or low priority? It's discussed in this manual, and it's a mid level priority that, re that generally requires a response by the by the applicant. Um, or the the owner of the property within three days. So if we have stagnant water. We would go out there and say this needs to be resolved in three days. But it's complaint oriented. It, it it can be both act. I mean, passive or active. And so sometimes we'd get complaint from residents, and sometimes we would see these issues ourselves. So it, it definitely works both ways. It, you know, again. Um, the town's uh, code enforcement person currently has multiple duties, and so he's out there constantly looking at right-of-ways and properties, but at the same time, we'll definitely take people's complaints on those issues and investigate them. It's definitely a common thing for him to receive um, several phone calls a week. Thank you. Is there anything more? No, sir. Like I said, just if you have any questions for me, I'm here to answer them. Go ahead, Mr. Commissioner Frost. Mr. Chairman, if I may. Um, so what, where can, where can I see this at? I, we didn't get it in our packet. So. I can definitely distribute those. Um, we can send it to your email. Oh, that'd be awesome. Yeah. I'd love to look at it. Yeah. And, and the other thing that you, and I don't want to step outside the bounds of the agenda here, but um, just, just a question or, or concern or, or an observation. Um, I, I guess, I don't know how you, this is can be positive or negative, but probably the vast majority of the people that visit our community are basically passing through it at this point in time, going somewhere. And so their view of our community is streetscapes, basically along 79 or Butte or, you know, kind of our, our main thoroughfares. And I've, I've noticed that in times past, some of those main thoroughfares just haven't presented what I would think would be what we would want to see and what we would want people to experience as they're going through our community. <coughs> So maybe a suggestion that I would throw out is maybe there's high, an areas of hierarchy that we pay more attention to so that we can portray what we want to become to the people that come through here. Like, I don't want to throw out examples because it, you know, it's going to be written in the notes, but there are some businesses that I noted that had weeds growing seriously big for a long time that I, I wondered what we were doing. And I know there were some of those that the first thing when you come in the community, you would see those, and that's definitely not the view that I want people to have of our community, but it's a weed-choked business, so. Well, this discussion tonight, like I said, was meant to be very informal, so you are definitely within your bounds on that comment, and we'll definitely take that to heart and go back to our, again, our code enforcement person, which is Curtis Williams, and let him know that that was one of the comments, and I think that's a very valid comment, that while this is really meant to be general in nature, that we do need to be strategic in the way that we use our man hours. There's no doubt about it. No. And again, I think that we look at life safety issues being our highest priorities and some of those nuisances being the lowest priorities. That's a very clear definition and easy for us. But at the same time, we definitely want to be doing things in the downtown area to, again, continue to vitalize that area. No, and I, and I, I commend you for that. I think this is a great opportunity to get people thinking about what in course code enforcement is and how and what the levels of hierarchy is like. I think it's a great thing and positive outreach, so thank you. Is there anything more, sir? No. I don't approve or disapprove, so I've got to ask you, have you reached the end? Yes, sir. Okay, so we'll move on to number two, under six, and that's an update of the Town of Florence Development Code Amendment, Technical Code, Section 150.300, Codes Adopted. Christopher Salas, Development Service Director. Um, 
the code, uh, sorry, the town approximately, um, maybe on the order of six months ago, started going through and evaluating the next series of codes to be adopted. Um, based on the evaluation and it seems the general lack of 2015 support, um, some of the concerns about some of the much bigger cities on 2015, the town has decided to invest in and adopt the 2012 building codes. We are working on having our own amendments to those building codes. Um, the vast majority of our, our current uh, amendments, we don't really have any. They're just, they don't exist on the IFC side or the building code side. There's very few amendments on that. Um, the town has kind of taken that same kind of hands-off approach to keeping a very minimalistic um, way of conducting business just staying to the very standard 2012 codes. Um, these have not been finalized yet. As you're aware, we'll be taking these for your review and ultimately your approval before going to the town council. Um, some, of the, some of the changes that we're looking at doing um, versus the standard um, IBC is a less restrictive energy um, code as it relates to the wrapping of HVAC ducts. There is some cost to developers to do it to the current 2012 standards, so we're looking at bringing that back. We've seen a lot of other communities kind of peel that back to 2009 or 2006 adopted codes. Um, for the most part, though, once again, I want to reiterate on the building safety side, a majority of the, of the amendment is just clarification. It is not making things more stringent, more strict. They are just, there are, there are parts in the code that we believe could be more clear. Mm -hmm. And so we're taking the time to, to kind of create amendments to add clarity to those codes. One of them is, again, unpermitted work in the idea of the actual IBC and IRC. They don't document um, the actual fee. It just says you can charge a fee for unpermitted work. And so most communities do, in addition to the original fee, is 100%. So what people refer to as double charging for unpermitted work. And that's, that's one of the, the towns gone that same direction. Um, honestly, so far since I've started in July 1st of this new job, um, double charging doesn't seem to deter bigger developers. They're willing to run the risk and do the work without permits and the small fee doesn't seem to deter them. So um, that's a bit unfortunate. One of the major changes does not come from my department, it's coming from the fire department. The, um, the codes currently, so depending on what community is, a community like Gilbert has what is considered a zero square footage sprinkler ordinance. City of Maricopa has a zero square footage ordinance. Um, Casa Grande has what's called a 5,000 square foot rule where they kind of go blanket across there. Um, the town currently is looking at doing a 2,000 square foot rule for um, the town of Florence. That comes from, again, the fire department. That is one of the changes on there. We are also still, again, removing the need for sprinklers on residential um, homes, which the majority of communities outside of the city of Scottsdale have removed that requirement. That, that clearly has to do with, again, a um, property value demographic issue, and that's why the city of Scottsdale can support that type of infrastructure. But as a whole, the majority of these um, requirements are, are more along the lines of clarification. There are a few things that, again, the fire department is um, doing specific to their apparatus, the weight of that vehicle, the 85,000 pounds, the, um, the wheelbase, the turning radius, the overhang of the ladder truck, stuff like that we're incorporating to be more, to be, I guess, more development friendly, letting people know this is the style of apparatus that we have. Um, but like I said, we will be bringing this in its entirety. The purpose of tonight was just to let you guys know that it is coming. Very informal. Um, field any questions, letting you know any comments, concerns on that nature there. But we'll be bringing it back. We're actually in, we are working on the final draft of it presently. Thank you, sir. Do we have any questions from the commissioners? Then we look forward to the finished product. Thank you very much. And I will close that presentation. Call it a public.
Commission response. Call to the public for public comment on issues within the jurisdiction of the Planning and Zoning Commission. Individual Commission members may respond to criticisms made, may ask staff to review a matter raised, or may ask that a matter be put on a future agenda. However, comma, members of the Commission shall not discuss or take action on any matter during an open call to the public unless the matters are properly noticed for discussion and legal action. In other words, it has to fall within our agenda. Do we have anyone called to the public? Then I will close the call to the public. Call to the Commission, current event only. <clears throat> do we have anything, gentlemen? Well, I do. Ms. Orton, you are a current event. It is my understanding that we are going to lose you. Yes. When is that to occur? October 20th will be my last day. So you've got nine days. Yes, I do. Are you counting them? <laughs> I have nine days. And you've got nine <laughs> days. I understand that you are the last professional planner that we will have working for the city. Yes. So we no longer have a planning department. That would be up to Mr. Sutless. <laughs> well, without a professional planner, you don't have a planning department. It's that simple. I find this quite disturbing. You know, I turned the clock back 15 years or so when Florence was eking its way into becoming a more professional jurisdiction, municipality. I remember, because I participated in the interview when we finally hired a director of planning and zoning. And as that staff was built, little by little by little, it became very professional. And a lot of good work was done, including yourself, although however short a stay it has been. It's disturbing because all of the hard work that was done by the town has now been lost. It's gone. It's like turning the clock back. There's an air of condescendence between town hall and the public at large. I find that quite disturbing. There's an air of mistrust. There's an air of incompetence. There's an air of being bullied by the town toward the public. The planning and zoning department is just one example of that. I don't know what the answer to that is, all I can say is you will be sorely, sorely missed, and I find myself disgusted with senior management of this town to allow this department to fold in on itself. Do we have any other comment? Then I will call, I will close the call to the commission. May I have a motion for adjournment? I'll move to adjournment. Both of you at the same time. Okay, so somebody gets to do it once and the other one gets to do it the second time. <laughs> All right, Commissioner Frost moves for adjournment. Commissioner Smith seconds. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed? We're adjourned.